Hey everybody, it's Crimson Zexel. Just decided to come at you again with another video. No, it's been a considerably long amount of time since last I was able to stream. Have no idea whether or not it's just the sheer volume of people at my college for fall semester or not, but just having enough bandwidth to be able to stream at a decent frame rate has kept things kind of sluggish. So instead, I decide, hey, why not just record something off of my phone? So uh, recently, as you can tell, I got my hands on a Power A GameCube Switch Pro controller and decide, hey, why not? Just unbox it, see how it feels, give my opinions of it, because I certainly haven't opened this up yet and have been waiting to start making this video to be able to do so. And my microphone is in the way of where my hands are, so. Uh, so, a couple of important things I want to get out of the way for anyone who is interested in picking up another one of these, uh, well, picking one up of their own. Um, first and foremost, um, one, I am not sponsored, and in any regard, believe me, I wish I was at times, just to be able to earn some extra m money for college, because groceries, yeah, trying to stay healthy and be a college student isn't exactly easy. Um, uh, the, what am I trying to say? Uh, each of these pro controllers is $50, so that definitely helps out financially compared to getting an $80 Switch Pro controller, but there is a reason for that. Um, and this particular co controller, the wireless controller, comes in like five different colors, being a uh, traditional GameCube Indigo, uh, the black GameCube controller, similar to the color of my GameCube, uh, Wavebird Gray, and then... There were two GameStop exclusive colors, the first being silver and the other one being the one you see here, the gold. Um, second, I suppose I'll just read off some of the features on the back since it's, v at least for me, very easy to read off. Uh, yeah, I think you can see it pretty easy there. Uh, Bluetooth Wireless Freedom, so basically the same kind of functionality that the Wavebird had to an extent. Well, again, to an extent. It wasn't Bluetooth back in the day. Um, motion controls. That is something I am really looking forward to with this controller because I cannot even begin to imagine how in the world I'm going to be able to play Splatoon with the same mindset as a Pro Controller or a pair of Joy-Cons compared to using one of these. Um... This also comes with a larger D-pad as well as an added left shoulder button. So a ZL and a bigger D-pad. So I would think for games that require a lot of usage of a D-pad, like Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Co Collection, this would come in handy. And then the ZL just adds in so much functionality to a GameCube controller that was kind of missing from using a GameCube controller adapter and a traditional GameCube controller to play games like uh, Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and so forth. Uh, let's see. Uh, this game is also compatible with all Nintendo Switch games, with one little caveat. Uh, this controller does not support, uh, if you can read that there, HD Rumble, IR Camera, or an Amiibo NFC. Personally, for me, that is kind of the one big disappointment I have in this controller, but it's fine because uh, this controller is battery powered to begin with. They had to store the battery charging, well, the battery pack for the controller somewhere. So rather than storing the NFC reader inside of the center of the controller and having it a wired controller, maybe, I don't know if the wired versions of these Power A controllers have um, NFC readers, but to make up for that, it's okay, I have Joy-Cons. Um, thirdly, 
because it is battery powered, uh, this controller does have a warning light that comes on when your battery is starting to run low. So uh, let me see. So these four little indicators right here that would normally indicate which player position you are between one and four. Uh, when the battery starts getting low, this will just light up and show you, hey, you need to replace your batteries or recharge them if you're using rechargeable batteries. Uh, in addition, this also includes two AA batteries. So that's pretty nifty right there. Just, hey, you have two AA's right out of the box. And fortunately, I have some rechargeable AA, so that makes up for it. So, without further ado, let's actually open this puppy up. Because I have been dying since I got this thing to be able to... Uh, open the box, get a feel for the controller, so on and so forth. Uh, dang it, come on. Try not to tear the box horrendously while trying to open this. Almost there. Yep, got it. There we go. Okay, so the batteries are right up in the top of the box. Uh, just some energizers. Hmm. Good to know Power A has at least one of the reliable sources for battery power backing them up. Okay, so open the little flaps. Uh, what do. Oh, there we go. This is an interesting way to box a controller. Uh, sorry about the jarring camera angles right now. I'm trying to lift this out gently, but it is not wanting to budge. So let's try this way. Uh, wow. Um... And I do apologize if I sniffle here and there. I am recovering from a cold right now. Uh, ended up catching it over Thanksgiving holiday because my nephew had a cold and I spent a little too much time just spending time with him, his parents, and the rest of my family. Uh, let's just set the box to the side for now. And ooh, this is looking really nice. Uh, just trying to line up what I'm seeing versus the camera. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, obviously because this was a Switch Pro controller, is that rather than the traditional start button right in the center of the controller, uh, if I can move this thing out of the plastic, is that it does not have the central start button, but has the Nintendo Switch plus, minus, home, and capture buttons. So that's a neat little feature to add in just so that that is a part of the system. So I can definitely tell this feels a lot lighter. Of course, the batteries aren't quite in the controller yet, but from all the reviews I've seen online for this thing, it is absolutely true this feels so much lighter than your traditional controller um the i don't know if you can hear it in the recording but whether or not i have to break in the control stick for the time being or not uh the control stick has a lot of clacking to it so you definitely know when you're moving something D-pad, definitely larger, definitely presses much better. Like, my goodness, this feels so much better than GameCube controllers I've used before. Uh, C-stick, still a little stiff, but in time I'm sure it'll feel very well used. Uh, let's see, B, A, Y, X, all feels... The exact same as I remember. Uh, L and R. Definitely not as springy, but feels like it goes down very well. Uh, what am I even trying to say? Uh, it feels like... 
<coughs> sorry. Um, it definitely feels like it is spring activated. It, that there are springs underneath the controls so that they just pop right back up, as opposed to how old GameCube controllers used to feel. Oh, and the Z buttons. My goodness, these feel so good. Like, compared to a regular GameCube Z button, this feels incredibly well manufactured. Like, uh, just, ah, I'm gushing over this. Because it feels so much better than your regular GameCube Z button. Like, I can't even begin to imagine how well Splatoon is going to play using L to just dive into your ink and Z to f ZR to fire. Uh, so, opening up the controllers back, you find the uh, battery pack, and it definitely looks like I'm going to... Oh. Uh, definitely an important bit of information. You will need to make sure that your Nintendo Switch system is updated to version 6.0.0 or later. So, there is that to be aware of. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to edit in some additional footage of me playing Pokken or Splatoon or something with this controller, but I will hopefully let you know later on. And just see you then.